welcome to the Jonathan Ross Show. Let's take a look at the fabulous guests who are in my green room for you tonight. My first guest, he's drunk his own urine, he's slept inside a dead camel, he's eaten raw goat's testicles, and that's just since he arrived at the studio an hour ago. <laughs> it's the king of survival, it's Mr Bear Grylls, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Bear, Always a pleasure. OK. I'm super excited about my next guest. Uh, I'm just about the biggest fan of her talent as you can be. Vanity Fair magazine called her the hottest comedian in America right now. The LA Times declared that it's the year of Amy Schumer. Yep. Well, it might not be Amy Schumer before you get excited. I... <laughs> She's not just a great stand-up movie star, she also has an Emmy Award-winning sketch show on Comedy Central. We're so excited to have her tonight. Yes, it is. It's Amy Schumer, ladies and gentlemen. Yes, she is. Amy Schumer on the show. So excited. Thank you for joining us. My next guest is an outstanding actor and rapper. He starred opposite Jake Gyllenhaal in Nightcrawler. He was opposite Matt Damon in the latest Jason Bourne movie, and he'll soon be starring against, I don't know, maybe Chewbacca, that big gold robot, lots of other guys in the next Star Wars movie. <laughs> it's Riz Ahmed. There he is. Hey, Riz. How are you? <laughs> and as if that weren't enough for you, we have one of the nation's favourite pop stars. She's had four number one singles, three number one albums. It is, and he will be not just chatting, but performing live at the end of the show. It's Ollie Moores. <laughs> <laughs> That's a fine head of hair. That's a fine twist going on there. <laughs> OK. Now, so Amy is here because she's been in town doing some stand-up gigs, but also she has a new book out. Her book is called The Girl with the Lower Back Tattoo. <laughs> it's very funny. Congratulations on the book, Amy. Oh, my God, thank you so much. That's OK. okay. I just want to say, you do have a lower back tattoo? <laughs> You'll find out. OK. <laughs> we don't need to see it now, but that's already something we have in common. Now, I was wondering... <laughs> If our other guests were walking any ink. Ollie, you must have some, an Essex boy. Come on. Absolutely none. What? No, none. Any particular reason? Um, my mum won't let me. OK, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> OK. Bear, I don't need to ask a big guy like you, a tough guy like you. I bet you, you must have loads. Uh, no, but I've said to my kids, whatever tattoo they get, I'm going to get. Wow. And that's stopped them getting any tattoo. <laughs> <laughs> OK, well, here's the thing. You might not have any, but you are a tattoo. Both you and Ollie. I don't know if you know this. You are really? tattoos. Aren't you? Yeah. <laughs> this is a picture of Ollie. Someone has. I, it's, I'm not sure whether it's their arm or their leg or their penis, but have a look at this. <laughs> what the wow! Hell? Jeez! <laughs> wow. <laughs> <laughs> It's going to take Simon Cowell weeks of laser treatment <laughs> to get there. Uh, but that's actually uh, a positively sweet tattoo compared to the one that we found someone has had done of Bear. Okay, and if you're nervous at all, look away now. But Bear, this is on someone's body. Look at this. <laughs> I actually remember that moment well. Yeah? Yeah, I mean, not the tattoo moment, but of each. That was a big old uh, yak heart. Of course it was. Maybe someone went in and said to the tattooist, I just want a cute picture of a bear and a heart. That's what I want to do. <laughs> <laughs> but that, that's not even the worst tattoo I've seen this week, OK? Take a look at this one. <laughs> Amy, I don't know what you were thinking of when you had that done. I have no regrets. <laughs> <laughs> OK, let's get my first guest out, shall we, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> He's the one bear you would want to meet if you're out in the wild. It is, ladies and gentlemen, the unique, the one, the only, Mr Bear Grylls. <laughs> You look right. Every time I see you, Bear, I think if they're looking for a new James Bond, why don't they just ask you? Could you act? Could you do that, do you think? Um, yeah. <laughs> That's a no, that kind of answer right there. That's what you do initially. So you've been busy, You're, you've been doing Running Wild. Do you watch Running Wild with Bear Grylls, ladies and gentlemen? Have you seen it? It's a great show. It's currently its third series. And this is where you go out with, uh, with famous people, essentially, into the wild. You put them through the chest. I've done it with you. I had a great time. Uh, unbelievable, though, that last year you got to do it with uh, President Barack Obama. You went out with the President of the United States, which I imagine will be impossible to top. How was that for you, spending a day with Barack out in the wild? Uh, do you know, oh, it was amazing. And it was a phone call I never thought we'd get when the White House rang up and said, you know, they say he's a fan of the show. Would you ever take him to Alaska oh, on an adventure? So he asked you. So I thought it was one of my buddies doing a spoof, you know. But, um... It all happened quite fast, and we went out there, and, you know, but you know what it's normally like. We said to people, come on your own, no entourage, just trust us, you'll yeah. have a good time. Obviously, with the president, it was different. We had, like, 60 Secret Service, you know, snipers in the mountains. I mean, I'm not joking, we had the whole wow. four helicopters in the air. They do have it all, you know, all set up for him. It is a mad thing to watch. They had this big black box 
that uh, if everything goes wrong, I said to the Secret Service before, and I said, what's the big black container? And they said, if everything goes wrong, he gets in there, all the nuclear codes, big hook on the top. He gets top in it. It was big enough for him to get in, yeah, like a like TARDIS. Yeah, it's a container with all the gear in it, hook on the top for a helicopter to undersling it. Oh, man, I want to get one of those, don't you? I know. So where do you get them from? That's exactly what I said. I said, Is it, have you got a spare? You yeah. <laughs> but what was cool afterwards, he said, you know, he said, love to meet the family. Bring the family to the White House if you're in Washington. So he did, and he was... Uh, actually, I was more nervous at the White House, because suddenly you're in his domain, you've got to look smart, although well, it wasn't that smart, but... Um, <laughs> yeah, you made, kids, you made zero the kids... effort there. You... <laughs> What's well, wrong thought... with you? You're representing your country. Look at you. You look like a plumber or something. You look like you're... <laughs> But the White House went into lockdown when we were there. Did I tell you about this? No. We got, oh, it was classic. It's literally while we were there. Do you remember a few months back when there was that shooting on Capitol Hill? Yeah. And it happened whilst we were in the Oval Office, you know, with the President. So we'd gone in and all the Marines were there, very relaxed, high bear, nice, you know. And as we walked out, everyone was suddenly like in ninja mode. And we, I thought, well, something's weird. And they went, please come with us. They took us hard right. Mr. President, hard left. And, and we got taken to this room. They said, please wait here. And I was thinking, it's a bit weird. And then we got taken down far, you know, down under the White House through the tunnels. So everyone had gone into kind of lockdown. See, but why did they separate you from him? Because you'd be like, in that film, Olympus is down. You could be like Joe <laughs> Butler. <laughs> you could have helped him get out of that sticky situation. I I'm with you. I was seeing it all playing out. Yeah. yeah. Let me ask you, though, before we move on from that, when you're doing that kind of, uh, when you take people out with you and you do running wild, uh, uh, have you been surprised by... I love by it, the... running wild. <laughs> See, that's quite an R and a W. That's a... Yeah, I know, I know. Anyway, that show you do. Uh, when you, <laughs> are you ever surprised by the people you think are going to be really adept and are really kind of gung-ho for it and the people you suspect won't be uh, so good in the wild but, but turn out to be? You know, do you think that, mm. you know, you get a kind of macho person or a really adventurous person who isn't so much when you actually get them out there, when push comes to shove? Yeah, quite often, actually. And I've learnt on the show never to judge a book by the cover. Often the petite little girls, you think they could snap like a twig. They're incredible, they're determined, they're focused. I'd say, on the whole, the girls outshine the boys. Um, it's true, it really, it really is true. OK, I, I have a clip to share with you. This is you with Courtney Cox, and th this is what you do when you have the chance to be away with her for a weekend. The meat is obviously not very good. No. Yeah, you need to smell my hands. I, I, I smell it. OK. Got it. But <laughs> the maggots... You can eat. Okay. Uh, you no, know, can I want to save it for later? Oh, look, I'll tell you what. Look, we're going to use this. We're going to use this testicle sack to keep the maggots in. Oh my okay, god! Okay, good. Okay, come on, okay. grab it, Steph. Okay, okay oh here we go. Oh my god! What's the things that coming out? You almost got got it off. <laughs> okay. Do you hold that, and I'm going to put the maggots in. Okay, hold that. Hold that. That's plenty for us. Okay, so hold that. <laughs> oh, no. That's uh, that's survival. <laughs> Is there anyone who said no, anyone you've been really crazy? You've had the president, you've had all these big stars, anyone you've been really desperate for who, who's just said no full stop or, or you just haven't got around to yet that you're really excited about maybe doing? Well, it's funny because a few of the... The, the guys I'd really love to take, the action stars, they're often a little bit more nervous. And it's funny because I think, you know, well, I, I'm not going to name names, but if you've been a few who've said to me, you know, but I need to train for 10 weeks for this really... I'm going, you don't. It's fine. Well, because they're Jonathan worried. Ross has done it. <laughs> no, I didn't. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, pretty, I'm pretty rugged. Arnie would be great. Yeah. But, um... I love taking comedians. I love to take Amy. Amy would be brilliant. She's hilarious. Amy, would you let Bear take you up a hill? <laughs> no. Nope. Pass. You... Yeah, really? You yeah, wouldn't consider got... doing it? No, I did. I did consider it. No. <laughs> <laughs> she's, she's, she's smart. She's smart. What? Um, but I would still love to take... You know, comedians are always fun to take. Well, look, when Amy's out here, why don't you go to work on her and try and charm her to doing it? I can hear you guys. Oh. <laughs> OK, uh, so let me ask you about, and this is the part of the interview I always enjoy when I'm talking to Bear, is the disgusting things you've put in your mouth over the years, the cuisine. Uh, is there anything that you haven't eaten? Do you think any part of an animal's body, any part of a human being's waste that you haven't, <laughs> when desperate and when necessary, you haven't consumed? No.
you know, from camel intestinal fluids to goat's testicles to snake scorpions, you, you name it. Yeah. I mean, it's a long list. Although you know, some, of those, eyeballs, some yeah. of those things, if you're meat eating, you would have had some of those things in a hot dog anyway, because that's <laughs> where... <laughs> so let me ask you just a few at random. Which of these, uh, tell me roughly how it tasted or, or how, how good it was, how eatable, because some things might actually be surprisingly tasty, I imagine. No. OK. <laughs> uh, the raw liver and eyeball of a yak. Terrible. A giant lava beetle. Disgusting. Moose's heart. One of the worst. Reindeer heart. Slight improvement. OK. Live poisonous spider. Now, you see, why would you eat that? If you know it's alive and poisonous, why would you eat that? Because I made a mistake. Oh, OK. <laughs> Uh, and do you know what? I learned from my mistake because that took me a while to recover wow. from that. What way. happened to your body after eating the live poisonous spider? I mean, you obviously felt silly, but I mean, what actually happened to you? <laughs> oh, yeah, I felt bad for a, a while after. The thing is, quite often the water goes wrong, you end up with diarrhea or vomiting. And yeah. I remember one point I was off this rock face and I'd eaten a, a dodgy snake, you know, the day before. Hold <laughs> on, well, we've all got that story to tell, haven't we, ladies and gentlemen? <laughs> But I thought, I thought, was, you know, I thought, oh, I'll make it to the top of this rock face, and then I'm going to need to go pretty pronto. Wow. But halfway up, I thought, oh, this is, I'm not going to make it. Oh, I hope no one was climbing up behind well, you, Bear. Camera, see, you, you see when the red goes on, so I will see the camera. I said to him, I say, Simon, just turn the camera, give me a minute, hanging off the rock face like this, one hand on that, leg in it, got my trousers down, doing diarrhea into the free air underneath. <laughs> the rest of the crew are like, oh, come on. <laughs> But, um, but I finished, pull my trousers up, you know. Well, that's the main thing. Carry on. <laughs> I think it's all going to be all right. Look up, and there's that like blinking, like yeah, red me. light, and I'm thinking, there's nothing sacred. <laughs> okay, uh, so I'm amazed at your success, and I don't mean that in a weird way. But I mean you're just so huge, and you've got clothes with your name on. Have you got a perfume? Have you got a scent? Nobody's going to buy that. Be odor urine. Well, you okay, know. okay. <laughs> I haven't really thought that through. And uh, you're doing a tour. This is uh, now you're doing a tour. You're doing a stadium tour. Mm -hmm. Okay. So if people go and see you live, mm. what can they see? What will they actually get to see? What's your show? So it's called Endeavour. It's been a big project. It's taken two years to put us together. And um, basically we turn all these big arenas into jungles, deserts, mountains, space, under the sea. And, uh, and we recreate some of the greatest feats of human endeavour, exploration, adventure. And then I'm doing all, all this aerial acrobatic stuff. Wow. to recreate avalanches and base jumping and crevasses. But I'm nervous, you know, it's big arenas, 10,000 people on stage. I'm, I'm nervous, but it's good. That's where you grow, isn't it? I'm going to put it all on the line, and I really hope people And so you've got it. your script down locked. How do you start the show? What's going to be your opening? Because that's the killers. When you come out, you've got to sell yourself to people. What are you going to say when you first walk out? The opening's on the amazing. And hold I'm on, not hold on. Let me it. just paint the picture for you. There's going to be like 50,000 people, 60,000 people. They've paid good money. They're hanging on your every word. The tension is huge. <laughs> you've got to walk out there. You're I'm doing here. essentially an untested show. It sounds to me like it's just a fake jungle. And you've got to walk out there. <laughs> And you're just on a bit of string. It's a man on a bit of string in front of some palm trees. How do you, how do you sell? What's the opening? Boom. How do you get us right well, at the I'm top? I'm not going to ring you two minutes before the curtain. <laughs> have you got yeah. a catchphrase, Bear? Have you, you maybe have a catchphrase when you go out there. Never give up. That's, my, that's it for everything. That's you know? And it's, that's why my, my kids go, you do bang on about never giving up. But the thing is, I've learned from the whole world of survival, it's not about the skills or the, you know, you're, how clever you are, how strong you are. It's all about the spirit inside. And this is what... Endeavour really celebrates unlikely people who've gone through hell through sheer guts, courage, and made it out the other side. Yeah. And that's why it's moving when you Never see give it. up. That's a great Never message. Uh, Ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Bear Grylls. <laughs> All right. Bear Grylls is going to stick around. Still to come in the show, I'll be joined by the incredible Amy Schumer. We've got Riz Ahmed and Ollie Murr, so don't go away. <laughs> Welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Bear Grylls is sticking around, but let's get my next guest out. She is the number one comedian on the planet right now. It's the fabulous Amy Schumer. <laughs> Amy Schumer, ladies and gentlemen. Are you okay there? Hi. Hi. Amy. I'm so excited you're here. Come oh, and say hello to Bear again. Hi, Bear. No. God, I'm so sorry I can't do your show. I'm so busy. <laughs> would, 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 would I'm you, so busy and you, I can't do his show. You wouldn't want to do it at all? You're not even sort of curious? I would, no, I would love to do your show. I'm just so busy. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs>
OK, so how exciting you're over here and you've just finished, uh, I think, is this your first UK, your first European tour? Yeah. OK, yeah. now how did that go? How did the uh, audience react? How, how do they differ if in any way to your American crowds? Um, these are really personal questions. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I will answer them, but I'm out of my comfort zone. And okay. I just want you to know well, that. Well, I apologize, but the people want to know. People want to know. Yeah. So the crowds have been, have all been amazing. And it's these countries where I, was, I didn't know how it was going to go. First of all, I'm a complete idiot. Uh, you're like, no, nobody went, <gasps> yeah. like, you're like, we know, we, can, we hear you, we see you. I know, I have no information. I was like, before I went on this tour, I was telling people, I was like, we're going to Oslo. We're going to Norway, <laughs> Copenhagen, and then Denmark. Like, I have no... Okay, you guys are also stupid. Those are the same place. <laughs> okay, good. You but, knew that. But you American that. people generally don't know, do they? they Wait, don't... Bear doesn't want me to talk to him. I can no, see no, that. No, I was, I was agreeing. <laughs> I didn't just want to be a nerd all like, yeah, I knew that. You, oh, did you, did you know? You knew. Yeah, I did, but I, I didn't know. want to be like, yeah, That's I knew. Fine. <laughs> you're, are, are you a bit scared of Amy? But your body language looks to me like you're a bit. <laughs> I know nothing that's going on okay. in this country. <laughs> like, I, you know, I know nothing, right? Well, like, well you know nothing about England. No, I nothing just know about nothing Britain. about um, Brexit. Like, people will go, you know, I pretend, and they'll go, Brexit, and I'm like, Brexit, you know? But I don't. <laughs> Like, I don't know. You don't, so you don't even know what Brexit means? Is it like when you exit breakfast? <laughs> you're, you're halfway there. Really? Yeah. Just hearing it off the top of my head, just saying it, it doesn't sound like a cr cr great idea, but I don't know <laughs> enough about it. Yeah, yeah. And I heard that Obama came over here and told you guys what to do. Yeah. And you're like, uh-uh, yeah. we're gonna Brexit. Yeah. <laughs> it had the opposite effect. Yeah, he, yeah. We'll effect. show Obama. Yeah. We'll brag it. What, what was he thinking? We'll show him. Maybe he really wanted us to Brexit and he was double bluffing. Maybe he did. How yeah. do you know if you're Brexiting? Like, are we Brexiting right now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's that's the... a cool name. If I heard that name, I'd be like, I'm for that. Like, yeah. I think maybe like that's Like a what child's happens. name. Yeah. I'm going to name my kid Brexit. <laughs> <laughs> I'm going to keep it. Amy, you know one of the things I, I love about your comedy is you seem to, to not care too much about the... You know, I mean, you, you care, you want it to be funny, but you, yeah. you will go anywhere, it seems. Uh, yeah. I love your show for that reason. Are there areas uh, that you, you've sort of, like, flirted with, you've got close to, and you've thought, no, I can't do that, that's too much? Is there any area where you don't think you could m make humour like out of it? go there. Um, I think so. I mean, I seem to be kind of nailing it on this show. Uh, <laughs> I, uh... <laughs> yeah, I don't know. I don't know because I think the most painful, awful things wind up being, wind up being funny. But I've also learned the hard way that that's not always true. But I don't shy away from anything just because it's uncomfortable. I, I like being uncomfortable. <laughs> now, uh, Amy's written a book, as I said at the top of the show. Very funny. If you're a fan of her work as I am, then you're gonna love it. It's called uh, The Girl with the Lower Back Tattoo. I said that. It's out now. There you go. It's mm -hmm. Oh, we see the tattoo on the back. I know. I'm, I didn't. I didn't Are look. You, you got so excited. I, well, because I had it. Uh, I had a digital version. Wait, can you move like your gross finger? Yeah, I'm sorry. I, I, I got that trapped in a deck chair. <laughs> what, what happened to you? I got it trapped in a deck chair. <laughs> a deck chair. Yeah, on Blind You were just Beach. trying to sit down to have a drink. Well, I was sitting. I moved the deck chair forward, and it collapsed on me. Have you ever heard such a tale? <laughs> yeah. Really. You should put this in your show, Bear. This it's is, a... I'll do that episode. Yeah. <laughs> does it hurt? That's what I should have asked. Yeah, first. it does. It hurts. Oh. Well, Still, though, can you... Maybe a glove? <laughs> maybe we can get him like a, like a Michael Jackson type of a situation. Uh, are you... Uh, you must be... Uh, I guess your life must have changed a lot in the last two or three years, because you... you... I got very rich, famous and yeah. humble. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but Thank it's, you. But what's so... Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, okay. What's okay. weird is that you, you came, I find it weird, that you, you, you were kind of, your family were wealthy when you were very young. Yeah. And then that changed almost overnight, it seems. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, we went bankrupt, and I just want to thank you for the chance to relive this on television. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no, the way, I, the way I realized... <laughs> The way, the I mean, it was, it, no, it is true. It's like we were, um, we were, we, I was like a rich kid. Yeah. And then at like 12, all of a sudden, we were like bear, like eating a what, fucking what? goat all around a fire. Give me an example. How would, uh, as How a rich kid, what kind of life did you have where you think, okay, you might not have known at the time, but looking yeah, back. I could have, I could tell 
most clearly by the quality of my birthday parties. Because, <laughs> like, one year we had, and this is in New York, yeah. we had a, I had a farm party, and there were farm animals, and, like, you're like, this is a Tuesday, but for a New York kid, <laughs> you've got to be rolling in dough. And so, like, and we're riding ponies in the works. And then the next year, my birthday party, after we went bankrupt, it was, um, remember the song Dancing on the Ceiling? Lionel Richie. Lionel Richie. Oh, what a feeling. Yeah. Um, that was the theme, and my parents just put a light fixture in the middle of the floor. <laughs> and my dad, like, turned a video camera upside down, and we just, like, danced around, pretending like we were dancing on the ceiling. Wow. <laughs> just, like, bring your own pizza. It was really wow. dark. Wow. My wow. uncle was the clown. Like, it was, I realized... <laughs> We've fallen on hard times. Yeah, yeah. But I bet you enjoyed that party almost as much as the one when you had every animal conceivable. You're wrong. You're just... <laughs> I wanted money again. <laughs> hey, one of the things I enjoy about you is, yeah. is how much you talk about your vagina. Thank you. Yeah, I Thank mean, it, it's... And I can say the same for yes, you. Yes, I, I, I talk about your vagina you a lot. You talk about vagina nonstop. <laughs> uh, but you do. It's a great source Have of... Have you ever eaten a vagina? <laughs> So now, uh, how is it for you? Uh, how was the movie making experience? Because did you see Amy in her film Trainwreck, ladies and gentlemen? How many people saw that? Uh, brilliantly funny. That was like five percent of the crowd. Yeah, yeah. And those who saw it loved it. Yes, uh, those clearly. five people just went nuts. Uh, <laughs> and it seems to me like you managed to keep a degree of control over what you were doing there because it, it, it had your authentic voice to it. I felt. Thank you. Yeah. The only change was that it was explained to me before I did that movie that if you weigh over 140 pounds as a woman in Hollywood, that it, if you're on the screen, it will hurt people's eyes. <laughs> um, so I didn't know that, so I lost some weight to do that. But yeah. um, never again. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, and so you're making more movies? I'm hoping you're making more movies. Yes, I just shot a movie in Hawaii with yeah. Goldie Hawn. Oh, wow, Goldie Hawn. All I love right. Goldie Hawn. No, How is it? that's not enough. It's Goldie Hawn. <laughs> You know, what you're doing, you know what you're encountering here is the fact that American audience, yeah. American audience go crazy when people just say anything they recognize, whereas an English audience, we kind of filter it and think, is that whoop worthy? Well, Goldie <laughs> Hawn is whoop worthy. Well, Goldie, I was doing the same. She is, but do you not find it strange in America if someone would just go on a show and they'll say, I'm from Idaho, and people go, yeah, just because they've heard oh, of it. Oh, you guys are not above that here. If you say Manchester. Yeah! Right. You, why okay, you, Jonathan. Why did you do that and because let us all know? and it's exciting to hear your town. Is it? <laughs> yes, <laughs> even if it's Manchester. <laughs> they don't care it was It's a diminishing return, though, I noticed that. It's getting less <laughs> each time. Uh, so how was Goldie? How was it working she with Goldie? Was, she was amazing. She's, I mean, she's one of my absolute heroes. Yeah, she's she incredible. Was, she's she's Because she's married to Kurt, Kurt isn't Russell. And he's a real cowboy. Did Kurt, he do your show? Well, no, I took Kate Hudson, who's Goldie's daughter, she's obviously. She's the best. Yeah, when she came with Goldie and I, we were getting photographed, which, like, if you've never been photographed in a bathing suit next to Kate Hudson, like, you have to. It's yeah. so fun, and you feel really... You feel really pretty. I can imagine, yeah. And you were like, I was like, I need to, like, gain some weight. This is crazy. Yeah, it's a um, confidence, confidence booster. Just major confidence yeah, booster. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, Amy, are you, now you talk about your various relationships, about your, your, your sex life when you were growing up, how you became a woman mm -hmm. in your book. Uh, are you single at the moment? Are you with someone? Are you dating? Are you looking? What's going on? Why? Who asked? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I have a boyfriend and I'm dating. Okay, and no, is I'm that? Just <laughs> <laughs> no, I have. A, I'm dating somebody. Somebody's agreed to well, that's, put themselves that's, inside that's me. That's great for you. Yeah. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. No problem. No problem. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so when are you coming back over? Because I guess you're, you've only been over the tour and that's finished yeah. now. When are you you're going back to the States, I guess? Yeah. When will um, you be back over here? Uh, mm, it you doesn't look good. It doesn't <laughs> look good. You guys don't need me. You we, have so we... many good comics and you got Bear yeah. and Riz and that other guy. It's great. <laughs> <laughs> I've never seen Bear look so uncomfortable. <laughs> This is a yes, yes. This yeah. is a challenge. And he this want is to what people do to you. Like you take them into the wild. We put you here next to Amy. You should have to do this for 24 hours with me. It'd be amazing. <laughs> He's so sweet. He is so sweet. Right. Amy, can you stick around and stay with us for the rest of the show? I would murder too. Okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, what a splendid uh, companion she is. That sounded like uh, we were spending our life together. <laughs> what splendid company. Amy
Tony Suma. He's sticking around. Still to come, we'll be talking about Oli Mars and we have Riz Ahmed. See you after the break. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, the fabulous Bear Grills with me, Amy Schumer. I haven't laughed so hard for years. She's sticking around, and we're going to get my next guest out. He's not just a great talent. He's also a number one solid gold cheeky chappy diamond geese. It's Ollie Mars. <laughs> Great to have you back. And you're looking good. You're looking like all in black. You look like, Thanks, a kind of, like an Essex ninja. <laughs> <laughs> Not quite there, but yeah. Um, but yeah but I'm you're looking trim. You feel dropped good. some weight. Am I since... safe on the sofa? I feel like I'm. You're very safe. Okay. What's your safe word? I don't know. What is... <laughs> I haven't got one. Do you not Maggot. know what a safe word Maggot. is? You must know what a safe word is. No. Okay, safe word is, uh, is yeah, people. <laughs> we'll, we'll tell you later. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> Well, you're looking trim. You've been, you've been. I know, I because I follow you on uh, social media, mm -hmm. and you've been going to the gym a lot. You've been posting pictures of yourself working out. You no, really been... I love, I love it. You know, I um, I got quite porky about a year or two ago. There's nothing wrong with that. <laughs> I was eating way too much, and um, yeah. well, yeah, there you yeah. go. Um, it looks like Michael Ball on the left. You know. Like <laughs> <a different person. laughs> um, but yeah, no, I just got a bit porky, and I was going back on tour, and I thought I needed to shift some weight, and yeah, um, yeah. yeah I went to the gym and started working out. Uh, but the gym for you, because you're, you're about as well known over here as someone can be. I mean, you know, your, your recording career's been huge. You've had a TV career that was huge as well. Uh, do, do you get bothered much? Do you get recognised? Is it, is it, you know, do you find that OK when you're, when you're sweating and you're looking the way you do in the gym? Is that, is that troublesome oh, to you? No, I, get, I mean, everyone comes up and says, oh, I wouldn't come up to me in the gym, to be honest with you. I mean, I, I, mean, I'm, I don't know if I could say it, but... You know, I fart in the gym, I burp in the gym, I don't smell too good. Yeah, most people go there no to work one, out. No one's good in the gym. <laughs> I mean, come on. Yeah, yeah, so you... Uh, you, you but you... you... <laughs> <laughs> no, do you know what I mean? I mean, it, I, I, I mean, I'm nice to everyone, but I do kind of grip my teeth and I'm like, look at the state of me. Yeah, yeah. Um, but, no, nah, it's cool, I don't mind. Uh, do you, are you a regular gym person, Amy? Do you enjoy the gym? Um, I think I might be at the gym because I'm, I'm farting and burping right now. <laughs> 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 it is now. Uh, okay, so you're back recording. That's what you you love doing the most, I guess. Isn't yeah. It? Well, I, I, after last year, you know, it was a crazy year touring and X Factor and everything else, yeah. and yeah, it was nice to get back into the studio and start writing again. And yeah. yeah, I started doing it in February and literally did it quite quickly. It took about two months, and then um, yeah, I'm back with new music. So, so I'm, I'm super super excited about so it. So the yeah. new album is coming out. It will be dropping, as the young Ooh. people say, it will be dropping later this year. <laughs> when does Slaying. it? Yeah. When 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 does it drop? 11, 11, 16. OK, so it drops on 11, 11, 16. Uh, but a single has dropped out already, I believe. You've yeah, already you... popped a single out for us. Yes, You okay. Don't Know Love, which is out now. You're going to do that for us tonight? I'm performing that later on tonight, yes. OK, now this is... Cheers, thank you. It's kind of, this is kind of about recent events in your life, though, isn't it? It's coloured by, it's informed somewhat by the breakup, by you no longer being with Francesca. Yeah, no, we broke up um, last year during the whole... Sort of... <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Oh, and um, yeah, we... <laughs> I quite liked Sorry, it. Sorry, Francesca. You know I got you, girl. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, I should love that. Um, <laughs> no, so basically, yeah, we, we broke up last year, and um, yeah, I, I, I wanted to. I didn't really know where I was going to go with this fifth album. Yeah. I've, obviously, to get to five albums was a huge achievement for me. I never thought I'd get to that point. So. And so, really, it was a chance for me to get in the studio and start writing. And, and I, I never really wrote about personal things before. I've, I have delved on it. But, um, obviously, the last songs that I've wrote have always been sort of happy, feel-good sort of tracks. Mm. So it was, yeah, a chance for me to kind of write about uh, my, my ex-relationship, which was tough. And now, uh, do you run it past her? Do you say, OK, look, I, I, I need to break this to you. The, you kind of, there's stuff in this song which you will yeah, understand well, is about you and about us. Yeah, well, we didn't speak for ages. Um, and then I saw we, we kind of had a bit of contact and I said, well, look, you know, I've got a new single coming out, a new album, like, I'd like to play you some of the tracks. Because I felt like, you know, it was, I wouldn't want her to, you know, turn on the radio and hear it for the first time. Sure. Or, and I just didn't want to hear her friends or family to hear it and go, oh, God, have you heard that new song? Yeah. Um, before she heard it. So, I, yeah, we, we went out and I sat in her car and played her the song and 
Kind well, of this, is, this, this, is, this sounds about as grim an evening as I can possibly <laughs> imagine. No, we had a curry. We had a curry first. So you buy a curry, you sit in the yeah. car with your ex partner and say and now hear this song I'm just about to release which is kind of about the breakup <laughs> <laughs> yeah but it was fine she was cool she she actually liked it wow. so she well, is some young woman then. She I mean, is, she's um, so, uh, yeah and then you know I played the rest of the album she she was cool with it so um no but she she was very she said to me she's super proud of it and okay hopes well, it does well so. well that's nice that's really yeah, nice. it's good okay I'm thrilled you're performing this evening because uh, Ollie's a great performer and you're gonna have a great time at the end of the show you use you, you sometimes refer to your exes in your material don't you Amy um, no, I think it's really disrespectful. <laughs> <laughs> Ouch. Uh, no, yes, of course. This is life. And, yeah. you know, it's, <laughs> you get your heart broken, you break someone's heart, it's just too painful. You gotta find the humor in it. You gotta get it out there. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Ollie, uh, now, who do you play yes. your music to when you wanna, um, before, before an album drops? Uh, you presumably play it to people, friends, family, yes. uh, record company people? Who, yeah, who friends, family, etc. But this year, I remember we, um, I was at my mum's house and um, my nephew was there, Louis, and I, I always think, you know what, kids are really kind of like, they tell you if they don't like something. Now, how old's Louis? Uh, Louis's only five, there he is. Oh, like, what a little sweetheart oh there. Okay. He's great. So I, um, I remember playing the album and I've sort of played the first four or five tracks. I'm sort of looking at him to come. Mum and dad are like, yeah, we like this one. Well, they're going to say oh, that. Oh, yeah, we like this one. Well, that's one. nice. They would and he was kind of sat there completely bored. Wow. And I remember thinking after about a month of writing, I think I, think I need to go back to the drawing board. Oh, so, so he has that much sway over Yeah, 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 100%. Wow, he sounds like a, a little bit of a tough kid going No, because there. I love him. I love him so much. He's, he's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm an uncle, so I, I, just, I don't know if I'm ever going to have kids. I mean, maybe I have kids out there. I don't I don't know. Um, <laughs> 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 that's that's the next be, album. That's yeah. kind of a cavalier attitude. I don't know. Yeah, 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 a little bit. My mum's here. I don't know why I said that. Okay, <laughs> okay well, we, we had been told about Louis in okay. advance, so I thought, okay, let's see what other five year olds think. So we actually, we've done this no. for real. Yeah. Oh, jeez. We, we played it to a bunch of fairly randomly selected five year olds. And, and uh, we wanted to see what they thought. So uh, are you ready for this? Oh, nervous. Okay, okay, here we go. This Let's is, the, we think. genuinely did this. Ollie didn't know about this. Check this out. This is their reaction. Did you like the song? Yeah. Did you? Yeah, it made me a big hit. Do you like the song? Yes, it's very talented. It feels like the stars are singing too. How did it make you feel? The tune was quite nice and it made me feel like I was going to dance. Next one, please. <laughs> Does that song make you want to dance? Sometimes. Did you good to dance too? Yeah. What did it sound like? Um, people singing. And how did that song make you feel? Not bad. Not bad, not good? Not bad, I said. Do you think it's going to be a hit? And me? No. <laughs> and Ollie, I like you and I like your song. Pretty universal amazing. thumbs up. Yeah, that's amazing. Love that. Okay. So presumably then, let me get into your personal life. Let me ask you some personal and searching okay, questions. Okay. Okay. Uh, I'm ready. I'm are ready. you Are you dating again? Are you out there in the market? Are you Do you use Tinder? Have you tried Tinder? That <laughs> do you use Grinder? Do you try Grinder? Have you used any of those uh, no. online things? Pokemon Go? Those ways people meet each other. Have you tried any of those apps? I haven't tried any of those. Okay. Not, okay. I've been tempted to go on Tinder just for the crack and yeah. see what happens. When you say just for the crack, you mean? <laughs> <laughs> You guys twist everything. Well, you said it. <laughs> OK, uh, it's great to have you back here. You're going to perform your single at the end of the show? Yes, I'll be, I'll be performing that. Yeah, OK, that'll be great. Uh, will you stick around for us a little bit first? I'm here all night. Because Riz Ahmed is going to join us. Ladies and gentlemen, Ollie Moore. Thank you very much. Uh, still to come, we'll be chatting with Riz Ahmed, and Ollie Moore will be performing his new single live in the studio. See you after the break.
welcome back to the show, ladies and gentlemen. I'm still here with Bear. We've got Amy Schumer, Ollie Mertz is here. We're going to get my next guest out right now. He's shot to fame in the brilliant comedy Four Lines, and he's currently taking America by storm in the gripping, nail-biting thriller The Night Of. It is Mr. Wiz Ahmed. <laughs> Wiz, take a seat. It's great to finally have you here. Yeah, uh, thank you. Now, I've been a fan of yours for a long while, ever since Four Lions. Cheers, yeah. Soon, that was an incredible comedy. But yeah. uh, we met once. I don't know if you remember this. We met at uh, Windsor Castle. I do remember that, yeah. Yeah, that yeah was it was a bit of an event for me. Probably you every Saturday night, wasn't it? No, no, because the, the Queen was there. We met the Queen, didn't we? Did you meet yeah. the Queen? I certainly met the Queen there. That was weird, wasn't it? Yeah. It was so <laughs> weird. It was weird. It was like, I mean, everyone from British film was there. George Lucas was there, yeah. Kenneth Branagh was there, who's a legend, but gave a slightly weird speech about how she's the ultimate Bond girl. Yeah, yeah. And then, like, <laughs> and then, um, but we all lined up, and it's all, like, you know, crazy 16th century paintings Beautiful and Beautiful. tapestries and, you know, suits of armour. And you line up, and there's, like, a guy stood next to her with gloves on, and he goes, like, you know, he's, Jonathan Ross. He's the equerry. The equerry. He's an equerry. You go there all the time, don't you? Yeah. <laughs> right, so for me, I went up and the guy next to went like Riz Ahmed, actor, writer, and rapper. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I just was like, look, and you know, usually you shake people's hands yeah, like yeah, this, yeah, right? Yeah, well, well, your finger is messed up. Yeah, sorry. And, um, <laughs> but, but they were like, she shakes hands like that. Well, that's right. But when, because he said rapper, and I looked, I thought she was trying to spud me. <laughs> <laughs> so I went like... Wow. And then all the people around her were like, he's gonna punch her. <laughs> <laughs> and then so I ended up just kind of like weirdly like just touching her fist. Wow. Like, wow. Choking her It was so something. awkward. Quite something. Did anyone say anything about that to you afterwards or did they let it go? No, I went up to Idris Elba, Elba afterwards, like, did she try and spud you? <laughs> <laughs> he was like, no, man, get away from me. What are you doing? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, so Four Lines was just uh, an incredible... What a bold uh, part as well, because it was uh, to, to, to find comedy in that area. Here you had a, a group of people who are fundamentalist uh, uh, well, terrorists, essentially, who want to be terrorists, but idiots yeah. at the same time. Yeah, I mean, they, want, they really want to be terrorists, but they're just a bit crap at it, unfortunately. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that was when I played a crow. Yeah, that, that was... was uh, <laughs> a lot of people thought I didn't have it in me, but... <laughs> uh, <laughs> but... But since then, and this is uh, my point, I love the thing is I've seen you mainly in, uh, it seems to me, American films or television shows, mainly playing American people. Yeah, I it mean, is weird. Yeah, and, and you do that very convincingly. Now, do you live over there now? Do you still have a place here? What, where's, what's no, your career like? No, I don't. Like I live here. Life? I'm from London, born and raised. Um, I don't live too far from here, actually. Okay. Um, so, yeah, no, I, I, I stay... I stay in UK. Does the American accent that come easy to you? Because uh, you know, I, I have a reasonable radar for that, and I hate it when I hear an English performer not quite nailing it. Right. You, you, you seem to get it very right to me. How hard? How, I don't know. I, I guess you know. I grew up like a lot of people do between different worlds. I had a traditional Pakistani household. Um, I got scholarships to go to like a private school in Oxford, and used to skip class to hang out with my mates who were basically like rude boys. Yeah. <laughs> so, so already you had kind of three you're different from like yeah, yeah from mm. from childhood or whatever. But I kind of feel like a lot of accents are actually quite similar without without you realizing it like welsh and indian are, are quite similar oh. <laughs> i'm gonna let you take the lead on this <laughs> they are so it's, i just realized it's gonna be racist to everyone <laughs> <laughs> universally offensive so i don't know it's like uh like i'm from wales down in the valleys and we keep lots of sheep what you do with those sheep is put them inside a chicken tandoori and we put it in the <laughs> Sing song yeah. Thing. yeah, yeah. Amy, can you do uh, an English accent? Um, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, um, <laughs> I, I trust Amy. On it. I trust Amy. Yes, you can. She can do it. She's the she's the complete package. She's got that down. She can do that. Uh, so, uh, let, let me ask, you mentioned your, your parents, uh, they, they were from Pakistan, they came here in the 70s, is That's that right? That's right, yeah, yeah. Uh, what do your parents think of your career? Were they keen to see you in the acting world, or did they find Definitely that Definitely not. Oh. No. <laughs> what, what did they want for you? Well, I think it's, it's quite an insane thing to do, you know, it's like playing the lottery, really. It's, yeah. you know, you can be lucky or unlucky. And, um, I don't know, my dad is like, 
actually remember when, um, when I got cast in Nightcrawler, I was like, Dad, I got cast in this film with Jake Gyllenhaal. It's great quite a film, deal. by the way. Thank you. Cheers. It's an incredible film. film. Thank, Thank you. familiar. <laughs> <laughs> she actually auditioned for my role, didn't get it? That's right, she's just bitter. <laughs> yeah. I saw her in the audition room, like... Consumed <laughs> with anger. Yeah. yeah. Just, um, been me in there. And uh, I remember my dad was like... Uh. My dad was... I was like, yeah, Jake Gyllenhaal. He goes, OK. It's uh, not too late to become a banker. <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, what? He's like, it's a good time to become a banker. They're recruiting. <laughs> and I was like, it's a terrible time to become a banker. There's a financial crash on that all the banks have just crashed. <laughs> and he was like, at least you know where you stand. <laughs> Yeah. It's not up and down like this. Yeah. No. <laughs> yeah. Uh, so you're enjoying... Uh, it's, it's, going, it's going crazy for you now, I imagine, because the HBO show, which is showing over here on Sky Atlantic, it's on Thursday at 9pm, but you can do that thing online where you see all the episodes at once. You and, can binge it. Well, Ooh, trust yeah. me, you're going to want to, because I watched it, I watched four in the first night, four in the second. You've, you've seen it, haven't you, Amy? It's the best show of the last many years. Yeah, it's, it's, called, it's the greatest show. It's called oh The Night God. Of. It's just really so the gripping. Set it up first. Tell us what happens to your character in it. Well, I don't want to spoil too much, but it's really a really kind of uncompromisingly detailed, unflinching, realistic kind of look at a murder case. Oh, OK, then I watch something else. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, this is embarrassing. This is embarrassing. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and it, it's kind of... You look at it from lots of different angles, from the uh, kind of detective's point of view, in, from the courtroom point of view, and prison as well, which is why I was interviewing lots of people you know, hearing their prison stories and learning all about that. I was chatting to this one guy and he was like, I right, so if somebody like you came in, you'd be like, I'd be like, yo, that's a herb, which means like, you know, a fresh green kind of thing. And uh, I'd be like, yo, let me see those shoes. And if you gave me your shoes, I'd be like, all right, maybe I can make you my girl. I was like, I've got to stand up for myself a bit here. Mm. So I was like, I don't think you can make me your girl, actually. <laughs> and he was like, you want to bet? And we didn't come back to it, but the rest of the interview kind of felt like a weird date. <laughs> you know, where it was a lot of... Te there's a lot of tension in there, yeah. Why don't we show a clip? We'll show a clip without spoiling it. Let's have a look at... This is, as I said, this is... It's sort of a trailer we've given you to give you a flavour of it. Uh, the show is called The Night Of. Uh, it's on Sky Atlantic, 9pm Thursdays, where you can binge-watch the whole thing. Have a look at this. It's amazing. I want to tell you something, and it's the most important thing you'll ever hear in your entire life. Don't talk to anybody anymore. Shut it. Turn to your left. Put your arms up. You don't have to talk to me. Unless you want to. You need to understand what happened here. Things just got out of hand. I'm off. Tell me how I'm off. We'll never get another chance. I told you not to talk to anybody. Uh, here's the thing you may or may not know about Wiz is Wiz is a very highly regarded rapper. Of course you are. That's why you were introduced to the Queen in that way. Uh, and, and can you keep that career going? Is that OK to be doing the Wiz MC stuff alongside the acting? Yeah, I guess so. I mean, it's just a time thing, but right now I kind of released a mixtape earlier this year. Yeah. Um, and, uh, and I've got an album coming out in the middle of October with my band, The Sweatshop Boys. Nice, um, nice. Like, <laughs> like, like yeah. that, like yeah, that. that. Um, and so, yeah. Kind of got still got okay. stuff coming. I used to do kind of rap battles, which is like it's how I started out. Well, you know, I like, like eight that. mile freestyle yes, battles. And and I like that when two normally young men will get together and insult each other to their very face. Yeah, yeah. You never have kind of aggravating circumstances. Yeah, just kind of poetry fighting yeah, yeah. instead of. Uh, what kind of insults would you drop? What kind of bombs do you drop on the other G's? Uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, I could do like some freestyles about like. Yes, you know, let's about do you this. Guys, let's so do some freestyles. Like, okay. Um, Can we just drop a beat for you? No, thank you. Okay. <laughs> I, and, uh, <laughs> <laughs> we'll, we'll, together. <laughs> we'll, we'll rap together later. <laughs> oh no, um, completely slain no, you there. No, <laughs> no he's, uh, he's more of a solo. I'm gonna get ready. No, no, come on, get it. <laughs> That's just me warming up for the battle, getting yeah, yeah, my, exactly. my mean streak on. Getting mean. So, I don't know, like, I was out in... So, 
uh, I've been out in the States, though Trump wants me to go. If you watch TV at home, I'm right there on HBO. Don't mess with Oli Merz or he'll murk your whole crew. You'll regret it, just like Amy's lower back tattoo. <laughs> and uh, shout to Bear Grylls, he eats carcasses and grass. Guess it must have been him that ate Jonathan Wass's R's. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I like that. That's pretty good. Yeah. That's a good package right there. Yeah. With our man, there you go. There you go. Yeah. Yeah. And to think we nearly lost you to the world of banking. Right? <laughs> All right, ladies and gentlemen, let's say thank you to our final guest this evening, the fabulous Italian, Mr. Wiz Ahmed. <laughs> thank you, Wiz. <laughs> Boom, bro. <laughs> okay. Ollie? Yes. Well, we're going to hear you perform, so if you'd like to go over and get ready, Ollie Mers is okay, going to perform for us in just a second. <laughs> go and get yourself over there. He's performing his current single, You Don't Know Love. It's a great sound, as approved by five-year-olds everywhere. Now, performing You Don't Know Love, it's Oli Mars. I don't wanna be your lover. I don't wanna be your fool. Pick me up whenever you want it. Throw me down when you're through. Cause I learn more from what's missing. It's about me and not about you. I know I made some bad decisions. But my last one was you Thanks to you I know lies, lies, lies How it feels when love dies, dies, dies And you told me goodbye, bye, bye I don't know when it's over When it's over Someone like you What I feel can write in a letter So I wrote this for you Thanks to you I know lies, lies, lies How it feels when love dies, dies, dies And you taught me goodbye, bye, bye How to know when it's over When it's over Come on! You don't know Get no better. You, 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 you got a lot more to lose. You, 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 you won't never ever get it. Cause you don't know love. You don't know love. 